Okay. Good morning. 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 We are live already this morning. It's Thursday, March 8, 2018. Okay. Today, we are going to be reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, uh, chapter 11, verses 14 to 23. Okay. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, by the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste. And house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? See, Jesus is a good philosopher. You know, uh, this thing that he's talking about here, how can... A house divided against itself stand how can Beelzebul cast out himself okay or fight against himself see this is the in philosophy this is called the principle of non contradiction that's a very important philosophical concept that something cannot contradict itself something cannot be and not be at the same time and at the same respect okay which is very logical right for example let me demonstrate that to you Joseph can you be Joseph and not be Joseph at the same time no. yeah no you cannot right because you are only one you're only Joseph you cannot be Joseph and uh, and uh, not be Joseph at the same time like uh, a table cannot be a chair at the same time that it is a table, right? Um, um, a stone cannot be a flower, right? So something that is something cannot be another. So that's what Jesus was telling these, uh, these uh, Pharisees and the scribes, right? If I was the devil, how can I turn against myself? How can I cast myself out? See? So that's the principle of non-contradiction. But you see, these Jews already ran out of arguments to hurl against Jesus that they already resort to the most illogical and really the most idiotic of all accusations that they can that they can hurl at him see? even to call him the prince of demons fighting against himself see? so our Lord wants to point that out to them he says well that cannot be see? you're already trying to just uh, invent all sorts of things to accuse me of, of something so um, any kingdom divided against itself cannot stand now what can we learn from this what can we learn from this uh, well let me read another passage towards the end where our Lord said <clears throat> whoever is not with me is against me and whoever does not gather with me scatters okay. what does our lord want to teach us through this gospel passage today he is teaching us the virtue of unity unity that for us to be catholic the meaning of being catholic the meaning of being in communion with the catholic church means that we are united with christ Whoever is not with me is against me. That's very logical, right? Not like the illogical accusation of, this, of the Jews that he was fighting against himself. He is built above him, himself. That's why he can cast out himself, right? That's illogical. But what is logical is whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. So our Lord is inviting us to be united with him. To be very close in communion with him. See, communion means union. It comes from the word union. 
I mean, to be in union with, that's what communion is all about. So in the church, we, we, we foster unity. We love unity. We always try to promote unity. Okay? That is why the Catholic Church is called one. What are the attributes of the Catholic Church? One. Huh? Holy. Holy. Catholic and apostolic. Those are the four attributes of the church, which we learn from the catechism. Right? See? Yeah. They're not no attributes, though. Huh? Those are the marks by which the church is known. The marks by which the church is known. Yeah. See? It is one, meaning there is unity among the people of God. Right? One in our baptism. One in our doctrinal uh, teaching. Okay? One in our faith. One in our belief. See? It is one. It is holy because it comes from God. Right? It is Catholic. And Catholic means universal. It is for all people. It is not uh, based on race or based on cultures or based on countries or based on whatever categories you want to come up with. It is universal. The church of Jesus Christ is for everybody. And it is apostolic. Yeah? What does that mean? What does it mean when, the, when we say the church is apostolic? It is, founded on the it is founded on the apostles. Very good, Sophia. <laughs> right? It is founded on the apostles. Meaning that we, we uh, have the line of succession all the way from the apostles. We can trace, we can trace everybody's uh, lineage, so to speak. Okay? It's traceable to the apostles themselves. Who carried out the mission that Jesus Christ has given to them. Which is to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So those are the, the marks of the church, the attributes of the church. And that is why it is very important. The first mark there is unity. Unity. Okay? Now how do we live out this unity nowadays? How do we live out this unity? Okay? There is one very important way by which we do this. And that is unity with the Pope. Unity with the Vicar of Christ on earth. We have to be very united with the, the Alter Christus, the other Christ on earth. See, the Vicar of Christ who is the Pope. The one appointed by Jesus Christ to head his church. To be the rock upon which the entire church is built upon. And that is the Pope. That is the Peter. See? And nowadays our Peter and our Pope is who? Saint Francis. Saint Francis. I, uh, Francis. I mean Pope Francis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pope Francis. We made him a saint already. Pope Francis. Okay. Uh, speaking of uh, Saint Pope. There is another Pope. Who the church just announced was go is going to be uh, uh, canonized soon, and this is Pope Paul the Sixth. Okay? Pope Paul the Sixth, who was beatified recently and is now going to be canonized as uh, a saint. So, uh, in my own lifetime, I've already seen uh, uh, known three popes who are uh, who are now uh, well, two of them are now saints going to be saints. Paul the Sixth, John Paul the Second. See? Who's the so, third one? Huh? Who's the third one? Who's the third one? No, I mean, I've, I've known three popes already. Or maybe four, that's right. Because there was John Paul the First also. And then there's Benedict the Sixteenth. Ah. See? And I had the beautiful fortune of uh, of meeting John Paul the uh, Second personally and really come up close to even be able to hug him. See? So, and we have the picture right there. See? Uh, so the Pope, unity with the Pope, unity with the Pope is very, very important for us in the church. Mia, why don't you get that picture over there? Let's try to, let's try to, uh, let's try to show it here. Yeah, that, one. that one, yeah, that one. Is yeah, that you? see? Yeah, you see? You see, that is my uh, picture. Okay, let's you? see. <laughs> That's me there. See? That is my picture with John Paul II. 
uh, as uh, he was coming down from the steps of the cathedral, Manila Cathedral. And uh, that was after the incident where I uh, hugged the Pope like that in this big burly um, um, guard, you know, elbowed me like that. And I started rolling down the steps of the cathedral. <laughs> so, but the New York Times luckily captured the scene. Uh, just right after I recovered, and I came up and uh, you know, right there, snapped that picture and gave me uh, my my um, um, souvenir <laughs> uh, a few minutes later. Okay, so unity with the Pope. We love the Pope in the Catholic Church. We love our Pope, no matter who the Pope is. Okay, because the Pope is always the the. Uh, the vicar of Christ on earth is the one chosen by the Holy Spirit okay, uh, to lead his church. And the reason why we have such confidence with the Pope is because Christ promised, Christ promised that the Holy Spirit will be with the church and will abide with his church till the end of time. Okay, So that is, that is the, the biggest uh, hope that we have. That the church, the church is always protected and guided by uh, the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, the Pope is also human. We know that. And, and the Popes can make mistakes. And some Popes have made mistakes. But the church has remained strong. The church has remained solid. The church has never faltered to this day. Why? Because despite the human uh, uh, um, um, mistakes of uh, the popes of the past. Well, the Holy Spirit does not make a mistake. The Holy Spirit is always with His church. The Holy Spirit will always guide the church back to its right course, even if some popes might make some mistakes. See? As long as the mistakes are not doctrinal uh, in nature, well, you know, we have no problem always being united with the Pope, always loving the Pope as, as the Jesus on earth, as the sweet Christ on earth, as some saints call him. Okay, so we have to be very united with the Pope. And that's why we pray for the Pope every day. Okay, and I would encourage everybody, pray for the Pope every day, every day. Pray for the Pope. If you go to Mass every day, you know, offer that Mass for the Pope. If you pray the Rosary every day, offer the Rosary for the Pope. Include the Pope in your daily prayers all the time. And that is a very, very good way to show unity, to show love, to show affection for the Holy Father, the Pope. Okay. As a side note, well, you might as well include the bishops and the priests <laughs> in your prayers every day as you pray for the Pope. Okay, that's it for us, folks. We're off to Mass. See you next time. Bye.